and, and thank you so much for joining us. And wanted to share a little bit for the agenda that Melissa put together, a little bit of, of what the sales roundtable, leadership roundtable is. Um, started really as our, our chapter meetings have grown to roughly 40 to 50 folks, um, all except our last one when our, our speaker encountered some technical delays. But our, our, our regular chapter meetings are quarterly, and they tend to run anywhere between 40 and 50 individuals. And the topic is, is relevant for everybody. However, my thought was, as a sales leader, I want to be able to take that information and break it down into what I, as a sales leader, was responsible for a number, getting my team motivated, um, being successful. How do I take something like social selling and, and have a plan and make it work, help my team, and ultimately manage up, right? So the idea of a sales leadership roundtable was born. I had shared that with some folks. Melissa graciously wanted to volunteer to help facilitate and, and coordinate. And thank you for that. And then I, I um, asked Josiana if she would talk to us about this, and she graciously agreed. So the sales leadership roundtable is, is geared towards sales leaders that and, and to take a topic, have this be interactive, and really something we can sink our teeth into and, and leave after the hour with great information that is actionable that we can and, and we can use today. And I know the content and then the, the discussion that Josiane is bringing to the table, you will all definitely have that. So um, definitely as we move forward with the Sales Leadership Roundtable and select topics, I welcome feedback from everybody. However, wanted to kind of give a little bit of the background and set some expectations for today. And, and you should definitely walk away with some great information and tips and tricks you can put in place today. And so that being said, what I'd like um, to do, go ahead. You want me to get started or? <laughs> yeah, I have your bio actually, Josiane. Oh, you so, want to read the bio. Okay, good. Yeah, I can give a little bit of the bio for those on the phone that aren't familiar with Josiane. She's the author of Smart Selling on the Phone and Online. She has a new book, Smart Sales Manager, which I've read and highly recommend. She's a pioneer maverick and visionary in the inside sales community. A 20-year veteran of the industry, Josiane is the founder of Telesmart Communications since 1994. Uh, the San Francisco-based solutions provider has been a leader in developing global inside sales teams and manager. She's a global thought leader who understands inside sales from the inside out. And for the past two decades, she has combined her sales and marketing talents in building a brand. She has trained thousands of salespeople and certified hundreds of managers on her Telesmart 10 system, carving a niche with some of the most talented and progressive Fortune 1000 high-tech companies in the world. Her company, based in the heart of Silicon Valley, has its finger on the pulse of the action. She is recognized among the top 25 most influential inside sales professional, professionals and as one of the world leading experts on inside sales team and management talent. She has provided consulting, coaching, and training solutions for hundreds of Fortune 1000 companies, including Autodesk, Citrus, Citrix Systems, Informatica, Adobe, and Carousel, that consider her an invaluable part of their sales strategies. She's a pioneer of the Sales 2.0 movement. Her Inside Sales Thought Leadership blog is ranked among the top 50 sales blogs by SalesCrunch, and she's considered one of the top industry social media users and, is, and, is a, has, and has strong thought leadership when it comes to prospecting 3.0. She's written hundreds of articles, ebooks, trend reports, and white papers on sales trends and inside sales talent, and she's a regular contributor for allbusiness.com, Salesforce, and Selling Power blogs. Please uh, join me in welcoming Josie Ann to our call today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Great intro. <laughs> I think I wrote that, that was good. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm so glad we're a, a small sort of intimate group because I don't want to feel as though I am just talking nonstop. So I really invite discussion, questions, and all of that. Um, and certainly at the end, we're going to really open it up. So I've got some slides that I've organized uh, around this topic of social selling. And 
most definitely, you know, anyone along the way, if you have questions, let's, uh, I'm not, I'm not glued to these slides. So, um, my book came out uh, several months ago, Smart Sales Manager. And by the way, can everyone see my screen at this point? Yes, I'm yep. sharing my screen. There's slides that yes. should be on the screen. Yes. Okay, great. Um, and really this book came out um, mostly as a reason to remind managers that we're in a really different world now. Um, after I wrote my first book several years ago, I really had a lot of managers come to me and say, what about me? What about me? What do I do now? My team is changing. I, I don't know if I'm keeping up with those changes. I used to be a field guy. I carried a bag and I became a manager. What do I do now? So this book is really about that. It's about reminding them that they've got to sort of stop looking in the rearview mirror and kind of move out of the way and sort of refresh their tactics. So my goal in today's session is to really maybe, you know, plant some seeds of doubt with all of you where you can hang up and go, wow, I'm, I'm realizing now that I, I need to rethink this and hopefully give you some new ideas on, on areas you can attack right away. So, um, and certainly this is one of my favorite topics, so I can talk about it all day long. Uh, so I want to go to the next slide. Um, social media, it is daunting. It is huge. How do you fit it in? And I guess I just want to ask anyone in the group here, um, on a scale of uh, 1 to 10 as far as, you know, uh, adopting it, pretty quickly on 10 versus 1. I don't even see myself getting there. I don't even know where to begin. Um, just out of curiosity, just throw out where what, what some numbers you are. I should have a polling slide, but just out of curiosity, where do you, some of you stand on the social media front? And I can call on a few of you. Charlie, where do you think you stand 1 to uh, 10? As a company or individually? Uh, great question. Have you my phone? Um, can you guys hear okay? Yes. Um, that's a great one. Uh, let's say as a company. As a company, we have a whole team uh, that uh, does a lot of what Tammy Shanks talked about at our last meeting last week, which is social selling through LinkedIn. So uh -huh. I would say we, and we've gone through a lot of the model that Salesforce.com has in play. And I would say we're probably in the eight range right now. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. That's a nice piece. Um, and I'll just pick on a few of you. I won't go through everyone. What about Jane? Yeah, so for me, obviously, I can't speak for the whole company because I'm, I'm here with IBM. We've got too many people I can speak for. But uh, personally, I think at least we're uh, near an eight or a nine at least. I mean, okay. everyone's been driving really hard at social media and uh, LinkedIn and the web pages and whatnot. Nice, nice. And Pierre, just out of curiosity, what about you? Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, social media is really, really important for, for me to, to get connected in my world, in, in the recruiting world. So I, I live that every single day. So. Great. Well, good. I mean, um, I haven't polled everyone, but it sounds as though we've got a fairly sophisticated audience that's, uh, that's okay about the social media piece, which is great. Uh, so I won't have to do a whole lot of convincing on why social media is here and is not going to go away. Um, but I do want to explain why it's here, and that is that in my book, I talk about this new normal, um, and this new normal is really the reason why social media is playing such a bigger part. Uh, this new normal is a bit of an ecosystem that really includes different things. One is the customer. Um, the other piece is the talent, the tools, and it's completely changed the face of prospecting as we know it. So I want to drill down into those just so we understand, you know, what's going on here. Um, when we first start with the customer, I have this sort of cog in the wheel here that shows um, really a lot of attributes from this customer. Uh, we have heard so much about this elusive customer. And again, a big reason why managers 
uh, tend to get in the way is that they had a different manager when they, uh, I'm sorry, they had a different customer when they were selling. It was a very different customer. It was a much more predictable customer. It was a customer that uh, they could engage with. And this customer is completely different now. That's why we call it this customer 2.0. Um, we have research showing now that this customer engages more than halfway past the, the middle of the sales cycle. In other words, they'll engage almost 60% into the sales cycle, meaning that they don't even come at the beginning of the sales cycle anymore. They do all their research on their own. They're very independent. They like to shop. Uh, they're very, very, you know, much smarter than they ever were, much more culturally diverse. So they basically do not need salespeople anymore. They really don't. There's even been crazy statistics that say 20 million salespeople today, in the year 2020, there'll be 8 million. And exactly for that reason is they just don't really need salespeople. But one thing that's happening also with this customer is they will trust their social networks much more than they'll trust the salesperson. So it's not unusual for the customer to check out their peers and their social networks before they decide to do any business. Um, so again, they're saying to us, you know, I, I want to engage with you. I want to know about you on a social level before we even talk. And what's interesting about this customer is as much as they are elusive and they say, don't bug me, and they're unpredictable, they're actually hungry for relationship. And it's actually a virtual relationship. So that's, that's some of the, uh, the dichotomy of this type of customer. Uh, just a few more things that I mentioned about this customer, uh, some of these things on this slide include what they don't want. You know, they don't want to be pushed. They don't want to sit deaf by PowerPoint presentations. Uh, they don't want to sort through tons of data. They much rather watch a video instead of read a white paper. They, they don't want to be held in a headlock. Uh, they really want, um, on the other side, what they do want is they want to scope the market on their own. They want to have something much more visual. Uh, again, the social media piece is so much more visual. They like to watch. They like to share. They like to collaborate. The second piece of this is the talent. Uh, this is another piece why social media has become so important, is this talent 2.0, we know the millennials. For a lot of you, I'm just curious, how many millennials do you have in your sales organization? Uh, just a few of you I want to ask. Uh, Kip, how's your millennial uh, talent there? How many millennials would you say you've got in your sales organization? What's the percentage? Yeah, currently about 25% of our inside sales team falls in that millennial category. And okay. having you know read your book, I can totally agree with some of the statements you're probably going to make next. It's a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a unique group of individuals, um, a lot of fun, highly motivated, and uh, they definitely want technology over talking. Yes, exactly, exactly. Let me hear from a few others uh, to hear their millennial. Uh, Gail, you just joined us, I think. Are you on? Uh, do you want to give us an idea of what the percentage of min millennials are in your team if you have a, a, an organization with millennials? To be honest with you, I would tell you that probably 90% of our team is a millennial. Oh, boy. Oh, yes. And, and that's actually much more common, is, is, uh, is a very, very high percentage. And so, you know, the thing about millennials is they are not going away at all. Um, they're, they are going to take over our workforce by the year 2020. Uh, they're going to be your customer as well as your team members. And they also are one of the most productive generations we've had in years. Even though uh, they're, sometimes they're a little hard to, to manage, we're realizing that uh, they're going to change the face of a lot of what's happening. And they are flooding inside sales organizations. They are just flooding. There is a, clearly a search for talent in most inside sales organizations. They all want more millennials. And certainly qualities about them, as you can see on this wheel here, is 
Um, they're extremely social. They were brought up with technology, so they are very quick to understand how to work all the social networks. Um, they like to have fun. They're very opinionated. They're good multitaskers. Uh, they constantly crave acknowledgement. They want to always be told how they're doing. They like lots and lots of coaching. It's never enough for them. Uh, they don't see hierarchies. They're flat to them. Uh, they can easily call at any level because they don't see see why in our day we had to work really hard to get to where you are. They expect it a lot faster. These are more qualities of what they want and what they don't want, um, what they're all about. Um, most definitely, they like that sense of camaraderie in the office. They like it when their friends work together. They place much more value about working with their friends and being all together than, than actually the actual work they're doing. Uh, so there's lots and lots more about millennials that we can talk about. Um, most definitely, I have a whole chapter dedicated to it. Um, my book is actually dedicated to my daughter, who's a living, breathing millennial at 25 years old, and she has inspired me for a lot of this. And, and then really the biggest part of this is that I realized for any of you that have uh, millennial children is that we raised these monsters. A lot of the reasons why they are the way they are is because we were the ones that took them to all the, the, the sports events and they got the trophies and we made them compete and we scheduled them out and we did all these things that we really created these kids to be the way they are. So, so that's the second part of this ecosystem is, is, is this millennial talent here. Um, now the other part of it which has really increased in importance is tools, 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 tools. Now um, it is not unusual for an inside sales organization to have at least a dozen tools in order for the to work. And what I want to say is is you know, we all know that conversations and talk time really decreases now. Uh, we're lucky if we can get up to two minutes on the phone with someone. It's it just continues to drop. Connect rates are dropping. But what I'm finding is the tools are replacing the conversation. And what I mean by that is that the, the more you can see through sales intelligence tools, connectivity tools, any kind of tools that you can have throughout the sales process, they can can actually replace the actual conversation. So really having a high tool IQ becomes very, very, very important. Um, and I, I want to just check on a few of you uh, and ask some of you uh, what, what, what the overall tool IQ is. With your, in, with your sales organization. Would you say it's a pretty high tool IQ? In other words, do you have a lot of tools that you have and the teams understand the tools and use them? Or would you say, uh, we need to get better on our tools? Uh, again, this is a big piece why sales managers sometimes get out, need to get out of the way. They may not realize the importance of these tools, and some do. So I, I want to open it up to a few folks um, and ask, uh, Charlie, can I ask you, what, what do you think your tool like you is within your organization? Again, we, we spend a lot of time using all of these sorts of tools, just about every bullet in the bucket we're going after. Um, probably Good. a 7 range right now, but aspiring to be a 10, because I know this is how you're more efficient and drive better, faster revenue. Good. Good. Excellent. And uh, we, we really know that um, just a lot of people that say we need to get more tools, we, we also want to remember we need to understand why we're using those tools. Uh, because just to go tool shopping, which I know some people do, is really not enough. To really understand how it fits into the sales cycle and what we're going to use it for is much more important, most definitely on the tools front. And if you notice on this slide here where it says, you know, you've got to have a high tool IQ, here, for example, are, you know, the top ten tools that you want to make sure that you cover. You know, you want to have, um, you know, pre-call 
research tools. You want to have the communication tools, lead nurturing. It's not unusual now for um, me to work with an organization that says, okay, yeah, we have a dialer as a tool. Uh, we also have, you know, inside view or Hoover's or a sales intelligence tool. Uh, we also have uh, a Marketo that does lead nurturing tool or Eloqua. We have a scheduling and calendaring tool. We have a presentation tool like a go-to meeting um, and and WebEx we have a collaboration tool we have a quoting tool so can understand that these tools are arranged throughout the sales process but the social media is seen as a tool it's seen as a primary uh, prospecting research collaboration that is clearly a tool so it's a good way to look at social media is this is really a tool we need. And just out of curiosity, anybody have a question about a tool that anyone's using that they just have a couple questions about before I move on? This is Melissa with Capco. How do you identify, you know, there's so many options out there. You know, how does one go about, you know, kind of narrowing down which tools are really going to give you the most bang for your buck as you're just starting out? Because definitely our team is, is very in the nascent stages right now of social selling. That's a great question, and um, I think there's a lot of different ways. One of them is I do want to recommend a friend of mine, uh, Nancy Narden, who uh, publishes Smart Selling Tools. She always has sort of a tools digest of which are the best tools to use. It, I think a lot of it depends on your audience, your organization. For example, I'll give you an example. There's a tool out there called discover.org. It's a pre-call planning tool that gives you a lot of sales intelligence, but it only focuses on the IT world. It only focuses on that. So if your audience is a heavy IT audience and you really want to reach them, that's probably one of the best tools you can have. But if it's not, it's not really worth your while. So I think that that's super important, is understanding the tools, who your audience is, the type of sales cycle you have. And then it also means that you may want to pilot it with a few of your team members, because there's nothing more frustrating than spending all this money purchasing a tool, and then at the end of the day, when you sit with one of the reps, and you say, well, why don't you have this open? And they go, oh, yeah, right, OK, yeah. I don't even have the password to that. And you go, oh, my god, I just invested in this tool, you're not even using it. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so this is what I call, you know, the sales superhero has is born now, and what that means is that this this superhero is not only just calling and leaving messages. They are now all about engaging. They're about educating. They're about mobilizing, collaborating, application. It's, it's really selling has changed so much. And, uh, and really the skills required are what I call superhero skills. Uh, in my book, I have uh, 25 superhero qualities of what you really need to do. One of them is being a good writer. You know, in, in the old days, you know, to be hired in inside sales, you just needed a good phone tone. Now you really need to be very smart at writing, understanding email messaging, subject heading, how to write comments on blogs. So uh, that's why I say this new superhero is now born. So um, inside sales is really adopting social selling uh, faster than any other um, sales organization. Why? Because they're the ones that are equipped with it. This is a perfect example of someone working. They've got their double monitors, they've got all their tools open, and they're at the controls. Now, this is something you will never see with a field rep, right? A field rep is all about getting out there, putting miles on their car, accruing miles on airplanes, you know, getting in front of people, making the presentation. So inside sales is really prime to adopt the social media piece. 
And so when we look at social media, this is a slide that just shows uh, what's going on, where it's, what areas are growing the fastest. All right, um, mobile marketing is really, really growing. And just out of curiosity, I'm always curious to hear how texting is starting to happen in the workplace. So Peter, can I call on you? Are any of your salespeople starting to text their prospects? Are any of my salespeople what? I'm sorry, I missed that last part. Are, are any of your salespeople starting to text, uh, te send text messages to their customers or to prospects? at any part in the sales cycle? As they get more familiar with, the, with the, uh, uh, their prospects and they build more of a relationship, then I think it's, all, it's more accepted, I think, yeah. Then it's, okay, okay. And uh, Gail, what about you? Uh, I'm not aware of any, uh, I'm relatively new to the organization that I'm in, but I'm not aware of anyone uh, using text to communicate. Okay, okay. Um, we're starting to see texting is starting to happen. And again, you know, when we're doing outreach efforts, which is a really important piece here, we want to get response. And we're hearing that some inside salespeople, when they're confirming appointments, sometimes it is going through uh, texting. So, uh, but mobile messaging is really increasing. So is the video social media, and email marketing. But this is a good range to see where it sort of all lays out. Um, these are some of the primary social networks. Uh, you've got Twitter. You've got blogging. You've got you know LinkedIn. You've got Facebook. Uh, you've got Google. These are some of the more primary networks. I'm not going to talk about all of them today, um, but I do want to, and we can certainly open it up for other questions, but there will be a few that I really want to focus on in terms of what what is really caught on. Um, for some people that are not sure how social media ex is explained, I kind of put together this different piece of like, well, what is Twitter exactly, and why would I want to be on Twitter? And what about Facebook, and what about some other ones? So here I gave you guys just an example. If you're, if you're talking about a hot dog, hashtag hot dog, um, how Twitter would translate it versus Facebook versus YouTube versus LinkedIn. Uh, this is just an example of how, you know, how, why we need to be on some of these social networks and, and in what form we, get, we can express ourselves. So the main one is LinkedIn. I mean, I, I think the LinkedIn one is, um, you know, I've been training inside sales teams for years and years and years, and I'm, I'm still a little surprised at the fact that LinkedIn isn't catching on the way I thought it would with inside sales. And um, I'm spending in my training at least, you know, an hour and a half for at least an hour talking about LinkedIn. Uh, there, the reason I don't feel it's catching on as quickly is that some of our millennials really see it as an extension of Facebook. Uh, so some of them don't understand why they need to be on LinkedIn as much. Uh, I notice a lot of their pictures. Uh, one guy's got a picture of himself surfing. Well, it's great if he's showing his profile picture surfing if he's a surf instructor. But if he works at uh, HP or IBM, not a good idea. So, but it really just proves to show that I'm constantly reminding them, you need a professional profile, uh, you need to write a professional summary, and by the way, you can participate in discussion groups where you can be seen. Uh, we're also noticing a tremendous amount of a response uh, through LinkedIn in mails versus regular emails. I mean, they're getting so much greater response. So I feel as though LinkedIn needs to become really a primary, primary prospecting social tool. And it hasn't yet taken off. So um, I'm, I'm just kind of curious if some of you agree with that or if some of you are not agreeing where you say, no, our team is way, way ahead on LinkedIn. I'd love to open it up for some discussion. 
isn't there an informal boundary in terms of, of uh, perception of LinkedIn? It's it's uh, it's a great I get great response as a recruiter through LinkedIn, but isn't it really the perception is that it's for that type of networking as opposed to uh, business communication? Yes, I'm so glad you brought it up. That is really what it started off as, and people still remember it that way. So a lot of times it's exactly that. It's changing the perception that says, no, just because you're job hunting doesn't mean you are on LinkedIn. <laughs> you can be on LinkedIn for many other reasons, but there is that perception, that primary perception of it's for recruiting, and it, I only go there when I'm job hunting. So in actuality, you know, we want to change that perception. Uh, for example, you know, we spend a lot of time with them on their LinkedIn photos. Okay, uh, some people may not have a photo, some people don't spend as much time. This is an example of two individuals, what photo is better. If, you know, for example, we explain to them how important it is to not only have a great photo, but also a great uh, title to who you are. And then also, what it means to participate in some of these LinkedIn discussion groups, uh, especially as a salesperson, to not only look up some of the, the, the important groups that they must network within, and then to notice that some of these groups have you know, 26,000 members, and to realize, if I comment in this group, and if I make an intelligent observation, or if I write about something, the, all of these people will see my name, and I will be doing more branding about myself and my company more than anything. This is a skill. It's a sales skill. It's a way to get yourself out there, and it's a way to brand yourself. And this is not something that traditionally has carried as much value for salespeople, and certainly sales managers say, this is a waste of time. Um, it is it is a big time sink. It is that without a doubt, it takes up time to go to some of these groups. Um, and so I look at this as, you know, metrics need to motivate. And I find that when we're looking at all of this, the old metrics that people have, that managers have had traditionally about talk time and uh, outreach are not really motivating because they're not really hitting the same areas that salespeople are working with. So what I've done here is I've, I've said, you know, the traditional metrics, if you notice on this slide, uh, they're not really adapting to this new normal. Um, many new metrics or many metrics now, they still don't really track email activity. They certainly don't track the social media activity. They don't really track the rep conversations. Uh, they're not tracking presentations like they could. Uh, but, you know, the old metrics are, are a thing of the past. A lot of the reason why uh, managers are holding on to their old metrics is because they know how to measure it. They, they have figured it out. And I'm sure that we're going to probably have a discussion on, okay, well, how do I measure this now if I am going to considering, consider me measuring it? And this is a great time for people to start sharing it. Uh, what I want to do is I want to suggest new things that we can measure, new metrics that we can refresh. For example, when we look at refreshing metrics on this slide here, um, why don't we look at maybe how many blog comments you're making on other people's blogs? There's many CEOs of companies that have their own blog. And I got to tell you, there's nothing, having my own blog, I've had it now for eight years, and I must say that there's nothing more exciting to me than when people comment on my blog. It's you know, it is as personal as you could ever get. Well, there's a lot of CEOs from companies that have their own blogs, and they're constantly blogging about anything. 
Um, I have a lot of CEOs at the airport. They'll write a blog post saying, you know, we're going in and meeting with our shareholders. We've got uh, plans to grow our sales team of, you know, 300 in the next two years. My God, if I'm a sales training company and I read that blog post, how perfect for me to write a comment on that post. So they, this is something uh, I would say most salespeople don't even read blogs, and yet it is such a huge opportunity for prospecting and for outreach, for recognition, for branding. I talked about you know uh, contributing to LinkedIn discussions and how important that is. Uh, again, why don't we look at metrics in terms of how many LinkedIn discussions are you participating in? And when I say why don't we look at these metrics, I say you know when you're having your one-on-one -on -one discussion with some of these salespeople or you're in a coaching, these are some of the questions managers can ask: Is you know are you on some blogs? What are you commenting on them? What about LinkedIn discussions? What kind of comments are you writing? What about how many video presentations have you made? How many how many go to meetings? What we know conversion rates are so much higher after an actual video um, or conference call. Um, tweeting uh, is happening on different levels, so we can. You know, some people are doing more tweets than others. It's, some are doing it more internally with a, as a company wide initiative. Also, how many nurturing campaigns are you doing? This is not just a marketing function to send out nurturing campaigns. And then maybe how many Facebook likes? So these are just samples of ways to potentially refresh metrics. And also, if we refresh them based on our customers, we can say, OK, you know, how many multiple contacts do I have within the organization, as opposed to just calling one person? How many live conversations did I have? How many triple threats did I send out? And in a triple threat is what I talk about a lot in my training, which is how many voicemails, how many emails, and LinkedIn that you sent out simultaneously together for one contact. We know response rate really increases when all three of those combined. And how many LinkedIn contacts, how many meetings, appointments. So these are just some new ways of looking at metrics based on the social media piece. Um, I really like showing this slide because this is a perfect example of if we want to have you know, these millennials that are very socially aware and they really believe in their social networks, we need to refresh everything. And here is you know, recruiting efforts where a company literally put together an Instagram job offer that went through on Instagram. It wasn't your traditional email you know, with an attachment, but here they took a photo. And this is the way we're going to keep up with the social media piece, is we are going to integrate it in everything we do. So you know, this is just a few slides I wanted to chat about, but I want to open it up for discussion. Um, Melissa, you may have a few questions that I'm happy to answer and, and certainly open it up for some dialogue with everyone. Thank you, Josiane. Yeah, this was really, really helpful. Again, for those of you on the call who, who want to ask Josiane a question, please go ahead and just announce your name and your company as well. Um, if you feel comfortable, you can also use the chat feature on GoToMeeting in the lower right-hand corner of the dialog box. Um, one of the questions I had was, you know, we have calling that happens. How does this kind of integrate with the social selling aspect? You know, how does it work with the cold call, or is the cold call now kind of obsolete? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, as I mentioned, with the social media and the tools really replacing the conversation, I think when you can follow someone and when you really know of what's going on, it isn't cold anymore. And that's the nice thing about Twitter. That's the nice thing about Facebook, blogging. You can really follow the immediacy of their needs. So now cold calling is, is not where you call out of the blue and say, hi, do you need this? Cold calling now becomes, hey, I noticed 
that there's been a recent acquisition. I noticed that you this is happening. Uh, now you're coming in with trigger alerts and trigger events that you were able to have activated through the social networks. So it's no longer cold. You're coming in so much smarter. Anyone else in the group have some questions for Josiane? Josiane, quick question for you on, on tracking some of those newer metrics as far as LinkedIn and, and um, mm -hmm. some of the new metrics you had mentioned. What is a good tool to do that? Yeah, that's a great question. I think um, a lot of it sort of depends. I think there's you know quite a few um, Salesforce apps that I think can check on some of this, but you know. I'm I'm not sure of of the exact tool that can measure all of it. What I highly encourage before even getting a tool is to start having that dialogue. Uh, that's what I encourage more than anything because I don't think when managers have that one-on-one -on -one dialogue that you know they're basically saying, okay, what are your numbers? Okay, is that deal going to close? Okay, is that upside? Is that commit? Where is it in your forecast? I mean, that's what they're doing. And then when they're saying, well, why couldn't you get a hold of them? Well, how many messages did you leave? So it's that same conversation. And what I'm suggesting is let's change that dialogue. Let's start saying, okay, did you go to LinkedIn? Did you go? Does he have a blog? What is he doing? What are they? You know, what did you go on some discussion forums? How many new people did you connect with this week? What was your intro? How did it look? Let me look at your LinkedIn profile. Let me look at your picture. So I'm saying I don't have the exact tool that can measure all of that, but I think managers have to start at least talking about it more than anything. Yeah, I would agree with you on that. Okay. And I'm really curious uh, with anyone in the group, especially because some of you are fairly sophisticated on the social media piece within your organization, that if anybody wants to share some ways that they're actually measuring it, that would be great. Yeah, I can I can jump in on this. This is Charlie T. We are just starting to track some of this, um, some of these metrics um, uh, with LinkedIn connections with email sent, with response to the email, even if it is uh, uh, not the response we want, just that there's engagement, and we're tracking that through Salesforce to track activity. This is definitely a challenge because it's not just how many dials did you make, what was your talk time, and how many appointments did you set. There's so much more in this. So um, this is, uh, you're hitting on some good buttons here. We haven't spent much time inside of Facebook, uh, Twitter is something we're talking about jumping more into, um, so that's that's refreshing to see there. But those are some some of the ways in which we're currently tracking metrics today. Excellent. Is there an app for that in Salesforce, or is the the inside rep actually just logging their activity or their tasks? Yeah, what we've done is we've we're, we've created stat lead stat lead statuses that they can go and select as to okay. what they've completed. And we're going to be adding like a Chinese menu where you're going to be able to select inside of it. Because this is like we're, we're building this. This is very fluid right now as we're, as we're building this out here in Mavenlink. Um, but it's going to have check boxes for like your triple threat like you were talking about earlier. Have you mm -hmm. left voicemail? Have you sent an email? Have you connected on LinkedIn? Did they accept? Was there a correspondence? So we can see through the course of the month what is a best practice to find out what converts when you do X, Y, and Z. Excellent, okay. excellent. Um, I mean, we... This we is, uh, this is, sorry? Yeah, go for it. No, sorry, I just wanted to mention that this is uh, James from IBM, and I know that what we're doing is that we're actually tracking what customers are doing on the website itself. So where they've been, where they're clicking. Um, it's not just the uh, in terms of uh, qu uh, quantitative, this is more qualitative. So we're mm -hmm. actually, uh, there's a web analytics tool that we're using that explains, that gives us uh, at the end of the day why customers did or did not uh, finish their purchase or what they're looking at and what they're not looking at and why they're not looking at it. So uh, that even goes beyond to the point where our LinkedIn conversations and our sort of blogs, it even tra tracks those as well. 
So it, we have, we've got a very good view of what the customers are, are doing or where, where we're hoping them to, to go and why they're not doing it. Yeah, and I, I'm glad you said that. You know, I think we have become very sophisticated at tracking the customer activity. I mean, there's so many tools out there where we can track open rates and click-through rates and, you know, SEO search engine stuff. But, you know, the tools to do to manage our salespeople and, and having them adopt to social media and tracking that is very new mainly because we're just starting to see ROI on social selling. You know, we're just starting to see that. Um, I don't know if many of you are familiar with Coca Sexton. He's over at LinkedIn. Uh, he's got the Social Selling University. It's a, he's a good resource. He's a great, great social seller. Dion, I'm sure you know who that is, right? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, and the reason I say that is I think that he recently came out with a social selling ROI report, and I think that more and more managers need to see that before they can be convinced that, okay, there is some ROI now. When I walk by their desk and I see them on LinkedIn, um, you know, and Facebook, I need to really understand that some of this is actually prospecting. And this is hard because managers are saying, wait a minute, I want them picking up the phone and sending emails out. I don't want them, you know, sending likes out. So this is really the area that it does get a little complicated. Agreed. It, it is tough, and it, and it's. But I'd rather have twenty five good direct calls that lead us to a good opportunity than fifty shots in the dark that potentially ruin our brand. Exactly. Exactly. And and you know people are blitzing more and more and more these days. And I'm not sure I really agree with the blitzing. I feel like. A lot of the reason they want to blitz is they're just trying to get some call activity going. I mean, there's so many inside organizations now that say, you know, we barely have an hour talk time, barely, in our day. So blitzing helps with that. But again, I much rather, my goal is instead of blitzing with calls, let's blitz with social media. Let's blitz with LinkedIn. Let's blitz and send out 25, you know, well-researched outreach programs uh, or outreach, you know, um, uh, messaging versus just blitzing out of nowhere blind. Yeah, I, I would agree. We've got to be smarter with the time that we do have. Yeah, and you know, I, I mean, let's let's bring our groups together and write the best subject he headline on an email for an hour or two, because that's what's going to get open before any email now is the subject line. So getting getting the salespeople to understand outreach efforts and response becomes more and more important when we're talking about social media. I had a question, Josiane. This is Melissa at Capco again. And this is for you or any of the other sales leaders on the call. Let's talk about onboarding, about how to get these millennials trained up if they're not coming from an inside sales position. They're young. They're eager. I'm curious as to how sales leaders can get them up to speed you know, as quickly as possible without overwhelming them. Um, that's a great question. I mean, onboarding is under, you know, under scrutiny right now because it's some of them are taking a lot longer to onboard than they realized. Um, mostly because millennials need uh, a lot more attention. They need a lot more guidance. They need a lot more mentoring. They need a buddy. They need more. And managers are saying. Oh my God, they're in my office every minute. I just told them something and they're back in my office. <laughs> so um, I would definitely say that, you know, new hire training is important in onboarding, but I do feel that, you know, a mentoring program or a buddy program or something with their peers is important because uh, this is a group, millennials, that doesn't, they don't really like authority all that much. So they want to tell you how they know it. And even in my training, uh, what I used to, I always train, change my training up for my audience. And a lot of times now I have pods 
where they come together as peers and they critique each other. Instead of me standing up there and telling them something, they're now in groups of four or five and they say, yeah, I think that was good. No, I would do this. And they rather hear it from their peers than hear it from a, a, a sales trainer. So what I'm saying is, you know, onboarding can be a lot of different ways. It can be mentoring. It can be peers. It can be collaborative. Uh, but it's got to be constant, consistent, and frequent, very frequent. Thank you. Um, good. Any Anyone else with any questions? Well, this is James again. I just wanted to make a quick comment on uh, the onboarding part and uh, tools as well. Uh, one thing I do notice is that some reps, they're, oh, how do I say this, they get thrown into the water in the deep end a little bit too quickly with a whole bunch of tools. Mm. And they kind of forget that it has to be first and foremost, I guess, the sales has to be there. The sales part of the uh, the character has to be there. And they just get over inundated with tools, and we uh, here mm. we just we just get <laughs> tools of every kind of every size. But eventually, it's the the person who wields that tool that makes the difference, not the tool itself. And salespeople do get lost amongst that. I find. Yes, I'm so glad you said that because um, I hate the word robots, but what I'm also noticing is that our millennial talent is they are the Siri generation. Uh, they want an answer. They want Siri to give it to them. They don't want to spend very much time figuring it out. So a lot of times what these tools can do is it, it kind of takes their human personality out of it because they can use it as a crutch, hide behind it, and not be as pr productive. So I'm glad that you mentioned that because it really reminds us that you know just throwing tools at them is not the, always the answer. Humanizing them first is more important. So James, how does uh, your team or IBM as a whole, how do they combat that? It's a lot of training, a lot of mentoring to be honest. Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of the, uh, the selection stage, uh, it's, we're looking for sales personalities. More than more than the ability to use the tools, I guess to begin mm -hmm. with, because you know, and any tool can be taught, and I, I, everything on the market now is fairly user friendly. It's fairly, you know, it's not. You don't need to be a, a, an IT guy to use these tools. They're not. They're not. They're the user interface is not meant for IT. It's for meant for sales. You know, if you're if you're that good at IT, then you wouldn't be in sales, right? So exactly. Yeah, so look, looking for the character, um, recognizing the character traits of a, of a salesperson, you know. Excellent, excellent. That's great. That's very true. Great. Um, so, um, Dion and, and Melissa, are you, are there some more questions or? Uh, how 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 are things moving along? Yep. Yeah, just one last question before Dion wraps up this first round table. I'm curious as to how you know you would compare virtual relationships versus you know people talking face to face. You had them in the room; they were a captive audience. Now you know you, they might be multitasking all over the place. Um, how do you kind of combat that? Yeah, that's a great question. And um, we're really going to need to get better at the virtual relationships because, as we know, field sales wants to move into inside sales because they're not getting those meetings anymore. They're not going out for those long lunches anymore. Um, they can barely you know, get face-to-face -face with anyone. Um, I am noticing that video is going to take over a lot more. There's a lot more inside salespeople now that are getting webcams uh, attached to their, you know, monitors so they can see their prospects. And um, I, I highly recommend that there's more sort of visuals where there's more photos that they can send. And I'm, I'm seeing that's going to take over a little more. 
but the virtual relationship, if it's done well, uh, can definitely stick. As I mentioned earlier, that customer is, is hungry for that virtual relationship. Even though they may cancel appointments, they, they still want to be connected socially. Thank you so much, Josiane, for your time today. Yeah, yeah. big pleasure. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for joining us today. I appreciate it, Josiane. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I know I found some great value in this discussion, and I certainly hope that everybody here did as well. And again, it was the session was recorded. We'll go ahead and, and send that out to everybody along with the deck uh, that Josiane had used. And we look forward to seeing you at future Orange County um, chapter meetings as well as any of the IISP meetings, AAISP meetings. And please reach out to myself with any additional questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dion and Melissa. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Okay.